All right, guys, this is the effects of changing dimensions work through video. Um, we're going to do a great job on this. I got a good feeling. Number one, it says a triangle has its height cut in half. This will be kind of an explanation video as well because I'm not making a separate lesson video. Um, so you have, you know, you have a base and a height. So the area of a triangle is one half base times height, but its height is cut in half. So that would be one half, and the base is three times as big. So it'd be three times the base and half the height. Well, what is three times a half? So we would have one half base times height still, right? One half base times height. But then we have a three times one half left over. That would be times three halves. Isn't that just the original area times three halves or times 1.5? Sure is. The length of one diagonal of a rhombus, so the area of a diagonal is D1, D2 divided by 2. One diagonal is divided by 5, the other one is divided by 6. So the new situation is 1 fifth D1, 1 sixth D2 divided by 2. Well, if I, if I multiply those out, don't I have 1 fifth times 1 sixth? That'd be 1 over 30 times the original numbers. Yep, so the, you know, D1, D2 divided by 2 is still there, but we have a times 1 over 30 going on. So if that's the case, it'd be divided by 30. Times 1 over 30 or divided by 30 is the same thing. That would be the overall effect on the rhombus. A rectangle has its base quadrupled. So the area of a rectangle is base times height. The base is quadrupled. That's 4 times the base. The height is doubled. Well, we have base times height here still, but don't we have a 4 and a 2 times 8? So overall, it is 8 times bigger. Times 4 times 2 would be times 8 bigger. If the ratio of the linear dimensions is 5 to 3, 5 to 3, find the new area and perimeter. Well, if the similarity ratio is 5 to 3, that means the perimeter ratio is 5 to 3, and the area ratio is 25 to 9. So you've got to remember that if you're working with similar shapes, that means every dimension is multiplied by the same thing. It'd be like going up to this one. What if, um, let's do an easier one. Like if I said that the numbers on a rectangle, you know, you have base and height. I'm just making this up. But what if you have area equals base on height? What if they were both times 4? What if they were both quadrupled? Wouldn't that be 4 base times 4 height, which would be 16 base height? Yeah, it would be times 16. It would be 4 times 4 bigger, which is like 4 squared. If it's the same number every time, for area, you're going to square that number. So the area ratio is 5 squared over 3 squared. That's why we're going to say 25 over 9. So to work with area, the first one, it would be 212 over x, that's the ratio of the areas, equals the ratio has to be 25 over 9. So we would cross multiply and solve. I'm going to use my calculator on that. That'd be 212 times 9, and I get 1908 equals 25. So divide that by 25. And I get 76.32. It says round to the nearest whole number. So that would come out to 76 if it's the nearest whole number. To solve for the perimeter, well, that would be 200 over y. The perimeters have a ratio of 200 to y. And the perimeter ratio is a linear measurement. So you don't do anything to work with perimeter. This one might be a little bit easier. 5 and 200 reduces to 1 and 40. So that means y equals 120. 76 and 120 are your answers. Find the surface area of the prism. So I would treat this like a big prism. I would do the perimeter of the base. So the surface area equals the perimeter of the base times the height plus the area of the base. So we need P, B, and H. The base is this shape, where we have 2, 2, 3, 2, and 2. 
Okay. So the perimeter, not too bad. 2, 4, 6, 8, 11. That would be 11. The height, front to back, is 7. But we need the area. So to get the area, we're going to have to treat it like two separate shapes. I would draw a line right here. This would be 3 times 2 is 6. The top shape's a little trickier. This is 2. This would be 2. And the bottom here is 3. Because it's isosceles, we can drop a height. This would become 1.5. We're going to have to do Pythagorean theorem. Um, so if I was doing this by hand, I would actually do a similar right. So right now we're doing a right triangle that is 1.5 and 2. I don't like the, the decimal, so I would double those numbers, make them 4 and 3. So it would be the square root of 16 minus 9. So that would be the square root of 7. But we did... Um, but these numbers are two, two times as big, so we'd have to divide by 2, so that would be root 7 over 2. So this would be root 7 over 2. I'm going to type it in my calculator just to confirm, but it would be 4 minus 1.5 squared, and I get root 7 over 2. Okay. So the area would be 1 half times 3 times root 7 over 2. Clean that up. That would be 3 root 7 over 4. So the area of the base is 6 plus 3 root 7 over 4. And then we tie all that together. We plug it into the formula. pH would be 11 times 7 plus 2B would be 2 times 6 plus 3 root 7 over 4 be 77 plus 12 plus um, 3 root 7 over 2. So 77 plus 12. I mean, you could type this in because they didn't tell us to round, right? They said round to the nearest whole number. Um, but just to finish the job, 77, 87 would be 89 plus 3 root 7 over 2. Plug it in. I'll make sure I got the right answer. 89 plus... Um, 3 root 7 over 2. And I get 93. Yep, round to the nearest tall number would be 93. So I treated it like a prism. I just did the perimeter of the base times the height plus the area of the base. But to get the area of the base, you had to work on a funky triangle. Happens sometimes. And then we're going to find the surface area of this solid. It says round to the nearest whole number. It is a square pyramid on top of a square prism. Square prism doesn't mean cube. It's a prism with squares as your base. And I want the surface area. So I'm going to start with the what are we actually having to do? What would be the plan? So the, my plan here would be the lateral of the pyramid plus the lateral of the prism plus one base. The only visible base is the bottom there. So to do that, the lateral of the pyramid would be one half PL plus the lateral of the prism would be pH plus the base. So we need P, B, L, and H for different things. Now, actually, I'll keep it separate because I don't want to get too confused. So for the first part, it's P and L. Those are the things we need. So we know that the base is a square. So this would be 4. Um, this side would be 4 as well. But we need this number right here. We need L, that slant height. We know the perimeter is going to be 4 times 4. Perimeter is going to be 16. We got that. But we need that L. Guys, it makes a right triangle with the height here. This is the apothem, but it is a square. Apothems of squares are the, are the easiest ones to get. They're just half the side length. So the apothem of this will just be 2, and that height is 3. So we're working on a right triangle that has a base of 2 and a height of 3. So that would be the square root of 9 plus 4. That's the square root of 13. So the slant height is root 13. So 1 half times 16 times the square root of 13 is 8 root 13. That is the lateral of the pyramid. 1 half PL for the pyramid. 
plus pH. Well, it's the same P, but H is going to be 9. So we need to add the perimeter of the base, would be 16 again, times 9, right? This height of the prism is 9, working on the prism. And then the area of the base is also 4 times 4. It's also 16. 4 is the only number that would make the perimeter and area the same number. So that would be plus, that would be 16 times 9, be 90 plus 54, be 144 plus 16. That would be 8 root 13 plus 160. So we type that in. And I get 188.8444, so it rounds to 189. All right, guys. Good deal. Good work.